Rob here and in today's video we're going to be looking at film form and cinematography and specifically we're going to be looking at camera movements. So first thing we have to address is the fact that how a camera moves around is dependent upon what piece of equipment it's attached to or not as the case may be. So the first thing we'll look at is the idea of handheld camera. So here we've got the cinematographer story you tell using a Super 8 camera to film some sequences. Handheld camera is very shaky. Um, it reminds us of home movie footage or it reminds us of documentary or news film footage. It's commonly used for creating a sense of chaos um, and action. So we see it a lot in action movies nowadays. Think of like um, that Paul Greengrass's movies like the Bourne um, Ultimatum, Bourne Supremacy, things like that. So shaky cam has become kind of a cliche at the moment. Very few people would accept um, Paul Greengrass it properly. But handheld camera work is the first one. Then we've got probably the most common thing you'll see a camera attached to, and that's a tripod or sticks, as they're known in the industry. So let's say a camera is on sticks. Tripods, of course, mean that A, the camera operator doesn't have to hold the camera. You can spend a lot more time carefully composing your images. But it means your image is steady, there's no shake, um, it's always going to be level if you want it to be. Um, it also gives you very smooth tilting and tracking and things like this. Again, this is stories we tell. And the cam, Cine Alta, FW900 cameras, physical cameras used for that. Then tripods themselves can be attached to dollies. Or dollies might be a specific dolly with a articulated arm on it that allows the camera to um, head up and down. But this is a platform on wheels, as you can see, and those wheels run along tracks. Hence, if a camera is moving backwards or forwards, left and right, we call them tracking shots because the camera is literally on tracks. Um, these are used for getting very smooth shots over rough ground. Um, as you can see here, the people pushing the camera, these guys, they're called grips. If you ever wonder what a grip was in a film, camera operator will sit on the camera. Problem with this is you can't track forward and backwards without really seeing the tracks. So what you can do if you're tracking backwards is some of these, um, some of these tracks will pull apart like a zip. So you just get a couple of grips to pull them and they come apart. You can't do it the opposite way, but you can't reattach them as far as I know. So they, you, know, you can use them for reverse tracking shots. A lot of the time now they're being replaced by steady cams. We'll come back in a minute. Um, then you've got cranes and jibs. Um, these in turn can be attached to dollies. But obviously this is used for getting high angle shots. But they're also good for very smooth sweeping shots. So the difference between a jib and a crane is cranes are much bigger. I mean some of these can be you know, 90, 100 foot tall. Um, this one looks like it might be more like about 30 meters. They're called giraffe cranes, I think. Um, but again, very useful for smooth tracking shots. Gives you a lot of um, variety in the kind of shots you get, especially when you attach it to a track because you can go in all sorts of different directions and do all sorts of clever things. A jib is basically like a crane, but smaller, and they generally don't extend it, I think. Okay, so another way you can get smooth shots is using a steady cam. Notice the spelling of this is a brand name, capital C in the middle, one word, no Y in it. So basically this is a harness that the camera operator wears on their body that takes the weight of the camera. But the camera is attached to the harness using a gyro stabilized spring loaded arm which acts like a shock absorber. So it doesn't matter you know how you know the camera operator can be jumping up and down on the spot, he can be running around in circles, going up and down stairs. And the camera always stays dead level. So no matter how much you move around, you're always going to get level shots. And that is really great for action sequences. Or obviously dance sequences like in La La Land here. Then we've got one you don't see enormously often. I don't think it's any of the films we're going to be watching. That's called Snorri Cam. It's sometimes called a body cam. It's called Snorri Cam after the Snorri brothers who invented it. Also note this, similar to Steady Cam, brand name, weird spelling. The camera is attached to a harness that points directly into the actor's face. So the actor is going to be dead center frame usually. 
and you're shooting with a very wide angle lens which creates a great deal of distance between the subject and the background so everything in the background so the actor's face is like really big in frame but the background seems a long way away and can often be quite distorted so the cow background seems to swing around wildly behind the subject so it's often used for showing people who are drunk disorientated you know dazed drugged whatever and then up here we've got of course vehicle mounts you can attach a camera to any vehicle you like. This is of course Apocalypse Now, um, where they filmed. How can they? I can't remember if they sat the camera operator outside a helicopter and flew around like that. That's just insane. But you can attach cameras to anything now. There are special mounts for putting them on cars, boats, planes, helicopters. Traditionally used for aerial establishing shots, but of course nowadays it's increasingly being done by drones, which are smaller, cheaper, and lighter to operate. So you've got you know, vehicle mounts of all kinds. Nowadays, with like tiny little DSLRs and GoPros, you can attach them to pretty much anything. Um, there's a brilliant shot in there's a South Korean action film, The Assassin, where they attach helicopters to drones during a motorcycle chase, and one of the drones flies under the motorcycle between its wheels and up the other side, and that's looks like, wow. And if you've seen the Eagle Huntress, which is a great documentary about um, a young... Uh, Mongolian girl who wants to become an eagle hunter. In other words, someone who hunts with eagles, not hunt eagles. Um, you know, they literally attach GoPros to eagles to show them hunting. It's incredible. Anyway, enough of that diversion. You ramble. Now, the thing you attach the camera to enables you to do certain movements. Okay, so we've got pans, tilts, rolls. Tracks, I've also seen them known as trucks and dollies. Um, there's arcs and there's crane and jib shots. Obviously, a crane or a jib shot is a shot that's used as a crane or a jib. It's usually high angle shots, there's or this swooping shot that might go from high to low and all over the shop. But what are all these things? We'll get through them one by one. Right, handheld shots. As we said, Used for action sequences to connote freedom, movement, excitement. They get you right in amongst the action. Or they can imitate news footage or home movie footage. So here we've got them again using in stories we tell. Using it to imitate home movie footage using a, a Super 8 camera. And then here in Apocalypse Now, it's a screenshot from the film where Francis Ford Coppola directs the movie. pretending to be a news camera crew. And of course they're shooting handheld here. Although it's got this strange sort of like little support that attaches to his waist. I guess his cameras are heavy. It's like a proto steady cam almost. There's a sound operator. Then we've got axis movements, pans, tilts and rolls. Um, axis movements are usually achieved by using a tripod, put the camera on sticks to ensure a steady image. This is an old fashioned style film camera. It's your 35 millimeter film canister. This will usually hold about a thousand feet about 10 minutes worth of film so this is a professional tripod so pans this is where the camera is panning you know it sort of like rotates left or right on a horizontal axis usually not always but usually to follow movement if a camera movement is following action on screen we call such shots motivated shots because it's motivated by the movement um, not to be mistaken with tilts. Cameras tilt up and they tilt down. This is the equivalent of you looking up and looking down. Or looking left and looking right. Right, so they kind of replicate head movements essentially. This is for looking up and looking down, obviously. A camera roll, um, it can roll in different directions. It can roll laterally, or you know, horizontally, or vertically. Um, this is where the camera sort of like rotates around its center point, if you will. Um, usually to show people being like a subjective point of view often. People are drugged, they're drunk, they're falling over, they're falling asleep, they're waking up in the morning, things like that. Hard to illustrate with a picture. Now, tracking shots or dolly shots. Okay, you truck, track or dolly in, dolly out or back um, tracking tracking dollying left and right it's something called crabbing so you can crab left and crab right because you know crabs walk left and right don't they sideways 
So, in this case, if the camera is pointing that direction, these people, this what was a Civil War drama they're shooting, the grip here, that, because the camera is pointing 90 degrees to the direction of travel, or 45 degrees at least, this will be a crabbing shot. So the camera is crabbing left in this case. This is the dolly. Um, as you can see, it's quite weird actually. Even though the dolly's got wheels, it's put on another set of wheels. These are like skateboard wheels, don't they? So, um, presumably because these wheels are for just rolling along on flat surfaces, or maybe they just didn't fit this track. Right. Notice this is an action sequence. There's guns being fired left, right, and centre, very loud. So the grips are under weight here, protection, health and safety people. But anyway, like you can see here at the back as well, there's a crane. So this shot is being filmed with multiple cameras, um, which is common in action sequences. Because you can only do it once. Um, again, same principle. This is tracking forwards because it's going that way, isn't it? Tracking forwards, tracking backwards. This guy's the focus puller. He's in charge of making sure that the shot is always in focus. This guy's the camera operator. He is your dolly grip. Track. Dolly. It's got multiple seats on it. Sometimes the director might want to sit on this as well, or the focus puller might want to sit on it. Arc shots are where a camera goes round and round in circles, pointing at a subject in the middle, usually. Um, as you can see, the camera operator is sat on the dolly, filming John Malkovich here. Um, again, often used to show confusion. It's like a 360 degree arc, but you can also see your environment as well. There's all the lights on the ceiling here. You can't see the ceiling in the shot. These are often used for aerial establishing shots where you'll get a helicopter like fly in a circle around a location, often say a tall building, for example. Notice that there's a little cross on the floor here. That's his mark tells him where to stand. Right. Crane shots. Used for high angle establishing shots, sweeping movement. So you can see they all stood on the roof. Look at all the lights around you illuminating the location. Cranes being operated by these camera operators here. Looks like there's another camera going on here, or that could be the director's station. Can't really see from this image. But yeah, that's what the camera can see, look, and it's sweeping all over the place. This is from the Making Up documentary you can find on YouTube. I'll put it in the playlist. Crane shots, as you can see, cranes can be mounted on the backs of trucks. Um, these trucks have got, um, they're used for all sorts of sequences, sometimes, like in this case, because there's a crane on it. Um, they're also used for filming driving sequences. So, the camera crew can sit on the back of this flatbed, um, or on the front of this car here, or using this platform, or they can, you know, sometimes on the roof, they, that trailer there is controlling another car behind it. Because, you know, if you see people driving a car in the film and you're looking straight at their face, you know, they can't drive a car with a camera and a bunch of lights and flags stuck in their face. They fake it. Um, notice how it's got little pneumatic legs to stabilise it because it's got a big heavy crane on the top of it. Again, sometimes it's apocalypse now. Look, the director is sat on the crane. Well, the camera operator will be sat on the crane. He's operating his own camera here. There's two seats, look, one for the camera operator one for the director. Here's a 30 foot giraffe crane look with the camera operator sat on the top. Um, again, this is how this, this is, this is interesting because in this sequence it started off being filmed by a steady cam operator who followed the bouncers backwards, but then this platform on the top of a crane was down on the floor and the camera operator basically steps backwards onto the crane and the crane lifts him up. So it starts off as a steady cam shot and then becomes a crane shot. Clever. This is a jib, as you can see, so it's a crane, but it's smaller. Jibs can be fitted onto dollies, so you can get nice smooth shots. So you can be tracking and arcing and panning and tilting and everything else at the same time. Steady cam is a better shot for steady cam look. You can see it's an articulated arm, takes the weight. Got a little screen down here so the camera operator can see what he's looking at. These are shots from La La Land, with the steady cam operator filming. Gives you nice smooth shots, especially in a dance sequence or an action sequence. Gets you right in the action, like I said. 
Uh, I've talked about the um, Snorri Cam shots. Again, this is um, Darren Aronofsky's Requiem for Dream. He loves them, he uses them a lot. You can watch a film like Pi, for example, or um, Black Swan. You can, of course, attach them to vehicles. These are the trucks I was talking about. Look, so you've got camera up right on the front, camera up on the back. These are for filming, you know, sequences where <coughs> they're towing a car. Like in this case, look, see? They're towing a car. Camera is filming it. So the camera is actually bolted to the front of the car. Uh, looks it's actually on wheels. So it's not actually being driven, it's being pulled. And the director and the camera operator and all the lighting and operation everything will sit on here. Um, this one is for, it looks like a, is that Corvette it's attached to? Or the wheels? I don't know. Anyway, uh, they've taken the bonnet off so they can bolt this scaffolding to the car. And then the camera is like really low down. Now this is, if you put the camera really down, low down on the ground, it increases the sensation of speed. So you can make, you know, you can make it look like a car's going really fast, even if it's not going that fast. Again, there's another one where they are, this is interesting, in that this platform appears to have its own engine. So it can drive itself. So the wheel drives like this. Oh, I don't know, it might be actually attached to the wheels of the car. Maybe the driver can actually um, drive it. Don't know. Anyway, these are lights, obviously. Can't see where the camera's going to go. Is that it there? Hmm. Anyway. Um... Again, this is sort of like a close-up of that, really. It shows, well, it's not the same car, it's the same principle. There's the bolt of the, the setup onto the car. Put this on there to keep the light off of the windscreen so you can see see through it. This will be towed by one of these. Like that is. Now this one is interesting. You see this a lot. If you watch Top Gear, this is the kind of thing they use to film the sequences in Top Gear quite often. Um, this car can drive pretty fast. So it can keep up with cars and car chases. And you've got this remote control operated jib on the roof of the car. So you can get really interesting sweeping action shots with a car. In this case, a Mercedes. Um, but it's usually something like that, like a Land Rover or a Range Rover or something. It's got a bit of speed behind it and can keep up with uh, cars and the car chase. Um, these are more specialized rigs. Um, this one is was using the Bourne movies. Um, I can't what it's called now. <coughs> but anyway, this guy's operating the camera. This guy's driving it. This thing goes very fast. That's the front end of that. So they've actually bolted a car onto the back of it. So this is used for doing car chases and stuff. Very fast. Helicopter, aerial shots, things like that. So we've got um, camera stuck out the door of this Jet Ranger. Same helicopter. Remember the same helicopter actually. So it's orange, it's going to be the colour. But anyway, um, films out the side, good for aerial establishing shots. Um, this one, as you can see, is in a remote controlled bubble, operated from within the, this is like the viewfinder, look, this is the camera operator. You see these a lot in, well, if you watch Formula One or other motorsport, they use these for filming motorsport. Um, into the pockets now we saw before we have to just <laughs> literally look bungees and rope and a wooden platform they tied into the helicopter i mean wow just just wow um the camera appears to be attached with some bungee cord um nowadays drones are much cheaper than flying a helicopter around helicopters cost a lot of money to keep in the air they're very expensive drones are a lot cheaper and more versatile uh, this, um, this Learjet has had a IMAX camera attached to the front of it. Um, this was for filming Interstellar. Um, don't know what they used it for in Interstellar, but aerial shots, obviously. And that's it. So, those are your basic camera movements and camera shots. Um, can't show you any clips, obviously, for copyright reasons, but I, sh you know, you can find these things. I will... In the next video, have a look at um, composition and framing. And I'll see if you've got any questions on where I am, and I'll see you in the next one.